Hi, I'm Lisa Bevere, and my husband John and I, we pastor or steward the ministry of Messenger International. Salam, man Lisa Bevere hastam, man va hamsaram John ba ham khadamat Masihi Messenger ro shabani mikam. My husband and I write books together, and we travel and speak. Man o shaharam ba ham kitab mi nevisim, safar mikanim va. But our passion is to see holiness and repentance overtake the 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 body of Christ. ولی بیشترین چیزی که دلمون میخواد اینه که ببینیم تقدس و توبه کلیسا رو فرا بگیره. We believe that God is pouring out His Spirit of the fear of the Lord. ما ایمان داریم که خدا داره روح خدا ترسی رو بر کلیسا میریزه. And restoring what's been lost and stolen. و داره اون چیزی رو که از ما دزدیده شده گرفته شده ما بر میاد. Today we're going to be talking about an incredibly important topic. امروز میخوام درباره یک مطلب خیلی مهم باشم از صحبت کنم. We're going to talk about sexual purity. میخوام درباره پاکی جنسی صحبت. Now I need to set this up for you about why this is so important to me. اول هم باید به شما بگم که چرا این مطلب برای من اینقدر مهمه. I was not raised Christian. ما توی خانواده مسیحی بزرگ نشدم. I lived the first 21 years of my life doing whatever I wanted to do. When I was 21, I met John. I'd never heard the gospel before. He shared it with me in such a beautiful way. He told me about a God that loved me so much. That he had sent John just to speak to me. I was so overwhelmed. I said, I want to become a Christian right now. And John said, I'm not done preaching. I remember I was terrified. He took so long to let me get saved that night. یادم میاد اون شب خیلی بی قرار بودم میگفتم این چرا اینقدر طول میده نمیذاره من نجات پیدا کنم بالاخره وقتی که I was shaking by the time I got to do the prayer دعای تو برا داشتم میگفتم تمام بدنم میلرزی After the time I prayed John said now you're saved جان به من گفت حالا نجات پیدا کردی And I said what does that mean گفتم مفهومش چیه معنیش چیه He said it means you're whole again گفت یعنی تو کامل شدی Spirit soul and body بدن جان و روح John had no idea he was talking to a broken woman. John اصلا نمی‌دونست داره با یک زن شکسته صحبت می‌کنه. A woman who had compromised every standard in her life. یه زنی که تمام استانداردهای زندگیش رو کنار گذاشته بود. I remember thinking I don't deserve to marry this man. داشتم با خودم فکر کردم من اصلا لیاقت اینکه با این مرد ازدواج کنم ندارم. He has kept himself pure. این خودش رو پاک نگه داشته تمام این سال. He has been faithful to God. او به خدا امین مونده. And I have not. من این کارو نکردم. But God used John to bless me in ways. ولی خدا از جان استفاده کرد که من رو برکت بده. That gave me a glimpse of the goodness of God. و نیکویی های خدا رو به من نشون بده. John told me that God saw me as a virgin. جان به من گفت که در نظر خدا من یک باکره هستم. They saw all the old things passed away. گفت همه چیزهای کهنه درگذشته و من در And I was a new creation in Christ. مسیح خلقت تازه هستم. I grabbed a hold of God's mercy. من رحمت خدا رو فهمیدم. 23 years ago. 23 سال قبل. But I want to use my position of regret. ولی میخوام از چیزهایی که درگذشته باعث پشیمونی من شده استفاده کنم. And my choices that brought consequences in my life. از انتخابهایی که کردم و نتیجه بعدی در زندگیم داشت استفاده کنم. To empower you to walk in something more. تا امروز به شما این قدرت رو بدم که بهتر زندگی کنید. خوب جلو برید. I want you to know I do not judge you for anything you've done. من میخوام شما اینو بدونید که من شما رو برای هیچ کاری که کرده اید داوری نکنم. I do not judge you for anything that was done to you. یا کارهایی که دیگران به شما انجام دادن داوری نمی to the women that have remained pure روی سخنم با خانمایی که پاک موندن i believe this message is going to bring strength to you این پیام من برای شما قدرت رو میاره and purpose for you هدف رو میاره and for the daughters that have found themselves in broken places و شما دخترهایی که افتاده اید شکسته اید i believe this is your time for restoration الان زمان کامل شدن شما رسیده and wholeness again که کامل بشید this is God's salvation for your sexuality. این پیام نجات خداست برای مسائل جنسی شما. I found myself in this area totally by surprise. من خودم تعجب میکنم از این جایی که قرار دارم. John and I have four sons. من و جان چهار تا پسر داریم. I never thought I was going to have to deal with women's sexual issues. 
من فکر کردم که دیگه من با مسائل جنسی دخترها هیچ وقت کاری نخواهم. And I was so thankful about that. خیلی هم شوک گذار خدا بودم برای این. Because I had been such a bad daughter in so many ways. چون خودم دختر I was so بدی بودم برای خانم. I was so thankful that I had escaped that by having all sons. خب اینقدر شاد بودم که دیگه با این مسائل کاری ندارم. But you know what God loves to do? God loves to make you face what you fear. Because when you face what you fear, you become fearless. God wants to take you to the places where His Word has been made flesh in your life. And let it bring forth life in the life of others. And when it comes to sexual purity, and sexual brokenness. This is definitely a word that's been made flesh in my life. John and I are part of a large church in Colorado. And the pastor has an incredible heart for the young people. And one day the pastor called me at home. I said, Lisa, I've got a great idea. How about tonight, you take all the girls and I take all the young men and we separate them and we answer all their questions about sex. I was holding the phone feeling like I was going to be ill. I became paralyzed with fear. I said, I'm going to have to ask my husband. I hung up the phone. I called John. And I said, John, I don't think I should be talking to the young people about sexual things. I'm afraid because I didn't walk in purity. To tell them that they can do that. But John wasn't really paying attention to me. He was on his cell phone in an airport. And he said, honey, I think you should just go for it. And he hung up the phone and left me on my own. I became panicked. I called back my pastor. And I said, Ted, I think somebody else could do this better. See, I was a really good heathen before I became a Christian, Ted. And there was just silence on the phone. Well, Ted was processing this idea. He said, Lisa, I don't want you to give your testimony. Since you don't really have one. I just want you to answer these young girls' questions. But I didn't even know how to answer their questions. I had lied to my sons. I had told them girls were evil. That they would take all their money and they would never have a car. That they could possibly get venereal disease by kissing. I told them I was arranging marriages for them on the road. And they needed to just forget the idea of dating. I would be good to them. They were young enough that this was still working. But now I needed some answers. The girls were allowed to give me the questions on little cards and be totally anonymous with their questions. I knew the number one question I was going to get from these young girls would be how far can we go? What can we do sexually with our boyfriends before we lose the blessing of God? I knew that I needed an answer for that. So I began to seek God. God, is it okay if they hold hands? Is, is that all right, God? And God was totally silent. He's like, I'm not going to even talk to you when you're being this stupid. 
God, I need an answer quick. خداوند یه جوابی بهم به بده. آخه الان باید بدونم. But there was only silence. ولی بازم سکوت. I got in the shower. رفتم دوش بگیرم. And while I was bathing, و وقتی داشتم دوش میگرفتم. My brain disconnected for a while. فکرم برای مدتی از این موضوع برداشته شد. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. و بعدم روح القدس داره با قلبم صحبت. He said instead of telling these young girls what they're not allowed to do. میگه به جای اینکه به این دخترای جوان بگی چه کاری رو نباید بکنن. Tell them what they can do. بهشون بگو چه کارهایی رو مجازن بکنن. He said you tell the young girls. به این دخترای جوان بگو. They can go as far with their boyfriends. که با دوست پسرشون تا اونجایی میتونن پیش برن. As they are comfortable doing in front of their fathers. چه به راحتی میتونن در برابر پدر زمینی خودشون انجام. See the father is the protector of virtue for the daughter. پدر محافظ ناموس و تقوای دخترش. And even if you're not in front of your natural father, you are always in front of your heavenly father. He would always want your virtue protected and never violated. But see, that becomes a problem in our culture. Because how many of you understand That we are in a sexual nightmare. که ما در یک کابوس جنسی به سر میبریم. When we have a nightmare. وقتی ما در کابوس هستیم. Everybody doesn't know what to do. هیچ کی نمیدونه چی کار باید بکنه. So they begin to hand out rules. بعد شروع میکنیم قانون گذاری. Don't do this. این کار نکن. Don't do that. اون کار نکن. Don't look like this. این طوری نباش. Don't look like that. اون جوری لباس نپوش. But I'm a mother of four. من مادر چهار تا بچم. And when my children wake in the middle of the night, and they've had a nightmare, I don't give them rules. I give them a dream. I sing them songs. I tell them stories. What am I doing? I'm trying to put back to sleep. What has been awakened in the wrong manner? اون چیزی رو که در اونها اشتباهی بیدار شده بخوابونه. God looks out and sees his daughters. خدا داره نگاه میکنه دختراشو میبینه. Young and old. پیر و جوان. Who have found themselves trapped in a sexual nightmare. که در یک کابوس جنسی گرفتار شدن. And says I'm going to sing a song over you. و میگه من برای شما سرودی خواهم خون. To put it back to sleep. که شما رو بخوابونم، آرام کنم. So the first question I addressed with the young girls was that it's not an issue of rules. It's about relationship. When it comes to sexual things, the power to awaken love is in the women's courts. How do I know this is true? Because I've seen this power in my own house. See, men are moved just by what they see. I can be getting ready. And I will run from one area of my room to another area to get dressed. And my husband will see me run from one area to the other. And he will think that's an invitation to have sex. I know I'm just trying to get dressed. But because men are visually oriented. By what they see. The women have to be careful. about what we show them. See, my husband will come behind me when I'm brushing my teeth at night. And he will flex. He'll try to show me how strong he is. He thinks I'm going to turn around and throw him down on the ground. And say, I want to have your children. But that's not what a woman is looking for. A woman is looking for relationship. Women have the power to bring intimacy. And beauty. And connection. Into the relationships when it comes to sexual things. But for so long. 
We have settled. که ما زنها instead of having intimacy. جای اینکه یه همچی رابطه زیبایی رو برقرار کنیم. For seduction. از دل فریبی استفاده می‌کنیم. And a false sense of power. یه احساس دروغین قدرت رو استفاده می‌کنیم. I have a lot of young girls that ask me. خیلی از دخترای جوان از من می‌پرسن. Why do I have to dress modestly? چرا من باید پوشیده لباس بپوشم؟ The guys have a problem with it. It's their problem. اگر پسرا فکر میکنن که این مسئله یه مشکل خودشونه. But see, that's not the truth. ولی این حقیقت نداره. The Bible tells the women. کلام خدا به زن میگه. Three times in the book of Ecclesiastes. سه بار در کتاب جامعه. Do not arouse or awaken love. عشق رو بیدار نکنید. Before it's time. بی جهت. Women have the power to awaken it visually. زنا میتونن از طریق دید مردا این محبت عشق رو بیدار کنن. Now we can either awaken love. ممکنه محبت رو بیدار کنن. Or we can awaken lust in men. ممکنه شهوت رو بیدار کنن. I have the four sons. من چهار تا پسر دارم. My third son Alexander. سومین پسرم الکساندر. Is kind of out there. شخصیت جالبیه. He says the most bizarre things. چیزای عجیب غریب میگه گاهی. At the most unusual times. در وقتی که نباید بگه. I was at the grocery store. یه بار توی سوپرمارکت بودم. And we were checking out. میخوام پول بدم و بیام بیرون. And Alexander looks over. Alexander نگاه میکنه. And sees a woman on the cover of the magazine. ریجلی مجله خانه میره میبینه. He points at her. بهش اشاره میکنه. And says, "Mom." به من میگه مامان. That woman. این زنی. On the magazine. She looks like she wants to eat me. I looked at the woman. Man, be on zan nigah karda. Said Alexander, I think she does want to eat you. Ofta Malik san fek kora mi mikhad baqan tor baqor. You need to be afraid of that woman. To bad az zan betarsi. He was only ten years old. Fagat dah salish bud. He didn't know anything about sexual. Asam masal jensi ro nemishna. But he sensed an appetite. Ama fahmid inja yek. The world has told the women. Dunya be zang gofte. You can have power with seduction. Tu mituni ba dilbari qudrat ro be dast. But where is all this power? Ama in qudrat kojas. They have promised us. Ama in qudrat ke ma qole shodadan. I have never seen women so stripped. Man ta be imruz har ge zan ro engad orian nadide buda. Of their dignity. Orian az hormatesh. Their glory and their splendor. Az jalalu az un shuk. As right now. See, a long time ago in the garden, God found that Adam was all alone. خدا دید که آدم تنهاست. He brought Adam everything. برای آدم همه چی رو آورد. But it said there was no helper found for Adam. ولی نمیتونست معاونی موافقه میلود پیدا کنه. God wanted to create an incredible hunger in Adam for something he had not seen. خدا میخواست یک گرسنگی رو در آدم به وجود بیاره برای چیزی که هرگز ندیده بود. Adam found no person that was like him but different. آدم نمیتونست کسی رو دور برای خودش ببینه که مثل خودش باشه اما متفاوت. The Bible says that God put Adam in a deep sleep. بعد خدا آدم رو خوابوند. And he took a rib out. یکی از دندهاش رو گرفت. Now I don't know about you but I don't sleep that deep. من شما رو نمیدونم ولی من هیچ وقت نشده اینطور عمیق بخوابم. Somebody came in and started pulling one of my ribs out. I would wake up. The truth is that Adam actually laid down his life. ولی خب واقعیت اینه که آدم جان خودش رو گذاشت. So that Eve could come forth. تا هوا بتونه به وجود. God takes that woman out of the side of the man. خدا این زن رو از پهلوی مرد آفرید. Brings her back to him. میاره بهش میده این زن رو. And when Adam sees her. و وقتی آدم این زن رو میبینه. He's overwhelmed. هیجان زده میشه. In Genesis 2. در پیدایش فصل 2. Verse 23. آیه 23. He says this is now. همانا این از استخانی از استخانهای. Bone of my bone. گوشتی از گوشتم. Flesh of my flesh. از این سبب نسانا میده شد. She shall be called woman. زیرا که از انسان گرفته شد. For she is taken out of the man. خدا زن رو از مرد کشید بیرون. God took the woman out. تا اینها بتونن دوباره با هم بیان و یک بشن. So the two could be back together as one. خدا همیشه یک رو بر میداره. God always takes one, makes it two, and brings it back one again. دوش میکنه و دوباره این دو رو با هم یک میسازه. In the garden, the woman and the man had no shame. در باغ عدن مرد و زن شرمی نداشتن. But the enemy of our soul, Satan, could not stand that. But the enemy of our soul, Satan, could not stand that.
He came into the garden and caused the woman to believe there was good outside of God. She took the apple, she ate it. She gave it to Adam who was there with her. The eyes of both of them were open. They realized that they were naked. And they ran and hid. God comes into the garden. And we see a very different dynamic played out. All of a sudden, Adam is accusing Eve. And accusing God. God has said, who told you you were naked? And Adam says in Genesis 3 verse 12, The woman, you put here with me she gave me some fruit of the tree and i ate it i often wonder how eve must have felt at that moment things had really gone downhill it went from this is that that i was looking for to the woman you put here all of a sudden, God has to make a provision to cover their nakedness. They're cast out of the garden of God. But the most cruel thing that happened in that moment was a dynamic entered in that had not been there before. Somehow, the serpent said to the man, the woman is your problem. Now God is the one that said the woman was good. And not a problem, but an answer. But with the fall, the woman became a problem to the man. I believe since the book of Genesis, we have had naked wounded women with wrestling with naked angry men each trying to get the other to bless them but the blessing that we look for as women and as men cannot come from each other it can only come from God. We need to understand as women, no matter what's been done to you, no matter how you may have been violated by men in your life, the men are not your problem, nor are they your answer. God is. God wants to pour out his blessing to restore the women. Your enemy is not God, nor is your enemy the men. Your enemy is a serpent that is wrestling with your image. In America, and in the European culture, he gets us to strip ourselves of our garments of virtue and purity and beauty and splendor. And the women in those cultures embrace seduction and foolishness as their garments. In other cultures, the women have been stripped of what they would have loved to have held on to by religion, by abuse. They've been shamed. So many daughters are walking in garments of shadow. And God wants to take off these shadows and give us his garment of splendor. God wants to restore back the beauty that we're on the daughters of Eve in the garden. He, he 
He promises to make us daughters of promise or daughters of Sarah if we refuse to give way to fear. Most women who have been compromised sexually through perversion or abuse are so afraid. Women that choose to be promiscuous are promiscuous out of fear as well. They believe that being promiscuous will give them power. But it's not true power. It is power that degrades the women. And God is speaking a word of healing to this. Like never before. Our packaging. How we dress and how we present ourselves. Is an issue of power. If we are immodest with our attire, we say to the men around us, I am cheap. Feel free to use me while you enjoy me. But when you are done, throw me away. God is restoring value the garments of the women. That doesn't mean you have to buy expensive clothing. That means he's going to clothe you in the spirit with an attire that says, I am a daughter of the king. I have value. I'm going to carry myself in such a way that I'm going to inspire the men to be something more than what they've been. I'm not going to appeal to their lowest level. I'm going to raise them up. See, only the women have the power to inspire the men to be something more. Oh, yeah, men may compete with other men. But women give life and purpose for all of the men's labor. This is why Adam was incomplete without Eve. He could not produce any life without her. Sexual things go to our very core being. We are in a sexual nightmare. But God wants to speak a dream over it. I believe that God is empowering mothers to bring healing to this area. When I look at my own life, when I was 19 years old, I made choices. That I learned to regret much later in life. When I was 19, I had no idea what it would feel like when I would be in my 40s. And my oldest son would say to me, Mom, you were a virgin when you married Dad? Mom, you were a virgin when you married Dad? I remember the timing for the question was totally wrong. It was before breakfast. I had not had coffee. John was not home. All of a sudden, I just had four boys looking at me. My teenage son was not accusing me. He was actually trying to affirm that I was. He, he wanted to hear something from me that would say he could make it. In that moment, my whole world froze. I thought, what am I going to say to my son? I could lie and say, that's really none of your business. I could say, you know, that was before I was a Christian. Or I could speak the truth to him. 
I remember I looked at Addison. من یادم به آدیسان نگاه کردم. And I said, Addison, I was not. گفتم آدیسان من باکره نبودم. But I want something so much more for you. ولی برای تو چیزی بیشتر رو میخوام. Only the truth. فقط حقیقت. empowers the next generation to walk in something more. Not the details, the truth. The truth is that a lot of us have made choices that we regret. But that does not mean that God does not want us to empower the next generation with the truth. The best example we find of this is David. David said to God, if you will cleanse me, I will be clean. Renew my spirit. Give me steadfastness of heart. He said then, Will I teach transgressors your ways? With God, He takes everything full circle. He takes our places of regret and pain. Lets us heal. He lets us embrace His healing. Then He lets us offer it to the next generation. As a tool of power. I never imagined that I would have to revisit my sexual choices. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, talks about this dynamic. There really is no such thing. As a secret in our life. I made a choice a long time ago. That I was going to be the one. That would tell my own secrets. I decided. That I wanted to openly. Share what God had done in my life. So the next generation. Could profit from it. I'm going to find the scripture here. I believe it's Ephesians 5, 1 through 3. Hold on. Right, hold on. Turn to that. Ephesians 5, starting with verse, verse 3. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, impurity, or greed. Stop a minute. What does a hint tell us about something? When there is a hint of sexual immorality in the church, it says there's a whole lot more than what you see on the surface behind the scenes. Among God's holy people, there's not to even be a hint of sexual immorality. Goes on to say, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, for such man as an idolater has any inheritance 
in the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath has come on those who are disobedient. Skipping down to verse 11, it says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Now, I want to talk about that. If you are living in shadow, or part of your life is in shadow, you've got to bring it to the light. Because whatever you bring to the light, what the light illuminates, or what the light reveals, the light brings healing too. Sexual things are usually things done in shadow. They usually have a lot of shame associated with them. When I talk to the young girls, they told me stories about the images that fought them. Things they had seen on television. Words they had heard in songs. Images they had seen in music videos. Comments and jokes that were made to them. When they laid down to go to bed at night, would come back and haunt them. And they wrestled with this darkness. And most of them wrestled. Alone. The shame about these issues. And the dirtiness they felt from past experiences and past comments weighed on them like a dark cloud. It is incredibly important that the church begins to bring light to this area. I found the daughters when I began to say you can talk about this the floodgates of healing began to come. It goes on to say in verse 13, everything is exposed by the light and it, be- it becomes visible for it is the light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine upon you. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Why? Because there's no such thing as a secret. We need to decide that we will live our lives in a way that we are wise with our secrets. If you have been abused, if you have shame as your portion in your past, if you have believed the lie that you would have power by seducing men. Today is the day to bring that to the light. And let God bring his healing. I think it's very important that we as women know what Jesus says to obviously guilty women. I love the woman taken in adultery. She has a dynamic that most people don't have in the church. I'm going to begin with John chapter 8. And I'm going to set up the story. Jesus had been teaching the day before and he promised to come back the next day. So all the religious leaders knew where he would be the next morning. At the beginning of chapter 8, it says that dawn he appeared again in the temple courts. Jesus 
Jesus came to the temple first thing in the morning. I believe this is significant. Because his mercy is new every morning. He comes and he sits down, it said, with the people. And he began to teach them. When all of a the sudden there was this commotion. The religious leaders have captured a guilty woman and dragged her into the presence of Jesus. They begin to ask her and Jesus some questions. Everybody is sitting, but verse 3 says they made her stand before the group. آیه سه میگه که او را در میان به پا داشتن او وایساده بود and said to Jesus به عیسی مسیح گفتن teacher ای استاد this woman was caught in the act of adultery این زن در عین عمل زنا گرفته شد in the law of Moses و موسی we are commanded to stone such a woman now what do you say در تورات به ما حکم کرده است که چنین زنان سنگسار شوند اما now I want to I want to talk about something. Notice they didn't call him Lord. Or Master. They only called him teacher. These were not people that really honored him. Because they didn't really care about the woman. And what would be justice for her? Goes on to say, they were using this question as a trap. In order to have a basis for accusing him. The Bible says that Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. Now, I love Jesus because he is so unaffected by them. They are yelling and screaming and saying, what about this woman? And Jesus bends down and starts writing on the ground. I have to wonder if Jesus was remembering another woman. Caught naked and ashamed in a garden. Long ago. I think as he drew in the dust. He was remembering that this is a consistent question of the enemy. داشت به خودش میگفت این هیله است که دشمن همیشه به کار میبره. Jesus, what are you going to do about your obviously guilty women? سوالی است که همیشه میکنه که با این زنای گناهکار. What will you do with the women that have been defiled or caught in the act? چی کار میخوای بکنی؟ این زنایی که دیگه تکلیفشون روشنه در عمل زشت و زنا گرفتار شده. Jesus bends down, he's writing, and they keep questioning him. عیسی مسیح داره می نویسه و اونم هی سوالو تکرار میکنه. After a while, it says he straightened up and said to them, If any of you are without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And then he just goes back down to the ground and starts writing again. Interestingly enough, under the law of Moses, if people were caught in adultery, both the man and the woman were to be brought before the elders. But only this woman is brought. We need to ask why. Well, I have found that women are the ones that lose the most when it comes to sexual sin. And religion, not Christianity, religion is always the meanest to women when it comes to sexual issues.
در مورد مسائل جنس. It said that they began to look at themselves. کلام خدا میگه از زمیر خود ملزم And it says that this those that heard began to go away one at a time. پس چون شنیدن یک یک بیرون رفتن. The older ones first. از مشایخ شروع کرده تا به آخر. This is something I've learned. The older I get, the more I know I need mercy. The quicker I am to extend it. It said they all left until it was just Jesus and the woman standing there. کلام خدا میگه همه رفتن فقط عیسی موند و اون زن که اونجا ایستاده بود. Now I want to stop there for a moment. حالا میخوام اینجا یه لحظه بیستیم. Let's paint this picture the way it probably really is. و بیاین اینو به تصویر بکشیم ببینیم چطوری صحنه. This woman was caught in the act. این زن در عمل زنا گرفتار شده. It's quite possible she's not fully dressed. پس شاید هم کاملا لباس پوشیده نیست. They wanted this woman completely shamed. She's standing holding garments around her. The people that wanted to kill her have just left. They've dropped the last stone. And are gone. She's embarrassed. There's a crowd waiting for Jesus to teach. And Jesus is riding in the dirt. I was that woman. I would have said, Jesus, thank you very much for getting me out of trouble. I'm going to run home and get some clothes on. But not this woman. See, she has something that every broken daughter needs. This woman was not content to hear that other people were guilty. Nor was she content to hear that others did not condemn her. This woman was going to stay until Jesus talked to her. این زن میدونست اونجا میسته تا ایسا با او سخنی بگه. It said that کلام خدا میگه. Jesus straightened up and asked her. پس ایسا چون راست شد و غیر از آن زن کسی را ندید به دو گفت. Women, where are, where are they? Has no one condemned you? ای زنان مدعیان تو کجا شدن؟ آیا هیچ کس بر تو فتوا نداد؟ He answers her back. She said, answers him back. No one, sir. آن زن گفت هیچ کس ای آقا. And then he says, well, then neither do I condemn you. But that, that's not what she was looking for. The very next line is what she was looking for. He says, go now and sin no more. Go now from this place of condemnation and leave your life of sin. Now, I always heard Jesus saying that like, جوری که من همیشه این رو میفهمیدم. I got you out of trouble this time. Don't do it again. مثل داره میگه خب این دفعه مشکل تو حل کردم. Why did I hear his voice like that? Why did I hear his voice like that? چرا من صداش اینطوری میشنیدم؟ Because often I talk to my children like that. چون من با بچه هم اینجوری حرف میزنم. I'll say now you got out of trouble this time. بهشون میگم خب حالا که مشکل حل شد. You better not ever do this again. دیگه دوباره هرگز این کار تکرار نکنی. But that is not what Jesus was saying to this woman. ولی عیسی مسیح اینو به اون زن نمیگه. Do you know why I know that? میدونید از کجا میدونم؟ Because the very next line. چون خط بعد. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. عیسی میگه من نور عالم هستم. Whoever follows me. کسی که مرا متابعت کند. Will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. در ظلمت ساکن نشود. This woman was tired of life in the shadows. I believe you are the same way. You are tired of living in fear. You are tired of living in shame. Some of you may have even stayed in purity because you were afraid. But fear is a bad counselor. We need to walk in light because he is in the light. I want to pray for you right now.
من میخوام برای شما دعا کنم God gives us the privilege خدا به ما این امتیاز داده to stand in the gap که بیستیم در دعا and activate covenant و عهد رو تکرار کنیم I don't know where you've been. من نمیدونم شما در کجا قرار I don't know what you've done. چه کار کرده اید؟ I don't know what's been done to you. من نمیدونم با شما چه کرده شده. But I know God. ولی خدا رو میدونم. And I know that your past و میدونم که گذشته شما is not your future. آینده شما نیست. And God wants to take this moment in time. خدا میخواد این لحظه از روز رو برای شما بگیره. all of the issues of darkness. و تمام مسائل تاریکی رو از زندگی شما بریزه بیرون. All the issues of past. تمام گذشته رو بریزه بیرون. And create a moment of life. و یک لحظه حیات. God gives each generation. خدا به هر نسلی the power to activate covenant in qudrat ro dade ke ahd ro dobare and this is your time to do this tikrar konan alan i want everybody just to close your eyes man mikham hame chesh pay khud ro you don't stand before me shoma dar huzur man vay nasad you don't stand before any other woman there jolay hich zan dige yam vay nasad you stand before jesus shoma jolay isa masih istad he is going to empower you u be shoma in qudrat ro khahad with the light that you need un zindagi ro nuri ke shoma to leave behind the shadows I want you to come before him. Say, dear heavenly Father. I come before you in the name of your Son Jesus. I enter your gates with thanksgiving. That you have set me apart. For this moment. And for this covenant, Father, I am overwhelmed by your gracious mercy and your love. And I thank you in advance for, for doing a mighty work of redemption. Not only in my life, but in the life of my children, and every seed that would pass through me. I make a covenant now with the living God, the Lord of heaven and earth, the great and awesome God. You keep covenant with those that love and obey you. Not for one generation, but for a thousand generations. Father, I stand in the gap, and I confess my sins and the sins of my father's house. Every transgression that we have committed against you. Forgive us, Father, for we have acted wickedly in your sight. We have been covered in shame. We have been daughters of shadow. But right now, we renounce this darkness and we embrace the light. Father, we break the hardness of the hearts. Father, circumcise our heart. Give us a heart of flesh. Roll away the sin and the reproach of this world off of our lives. I confess the sin of seduction, of divination, of witchcraft, of promiscuity, of perversion, of pornography, pornography, of adultery, zina, of abortion. Father, I renounce every dark thing. I separate myself. Angels of the Most High God, take your sword of light and separate me from every entanglement. از هر اسارت، every ungodly soul tie، از هر چیزی که از خدا نیست، sever it، جدا کنید، by your spirit، با روحتون، cast your sword of light، پدر، right now، نور تو به ما بدم، همین لحظه، and sever every hold of darkness، و هر تاریکی رو بردار، every entanglement of shame، هر شرمی که ما رو بسته از ما بردار، 
every guilty consciousness. Let the light of God permeate my being. Father, I surrender my most intimate portions of my life to you. Come and bring your healing into my sexuality. Bring restoration. Bring wholeness. Bring light to the darkness. Now, Father, settle the issues of blood in my life. Now, I believe that God wants to bring a healing of sexual diseases. I don't know why. But the church is afraid to pray for sexual diseases. Somehow we have become like the Pharisees. We believe that people get what they deserve. But none of us get what we deserve. All of us deserve judgment. And God gave us mercy. More than forgiveness, Jesus gives light and he gives healing to the women that will just believe that not only is he, but he is good. Psalms tells us, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all my inmost being. Bless his holy name. Who forgives all my sins. Do you believe he has forgiven all of your sins? Do you believe that? Well, we're going to make sure it happens right now. I want you to say, Father, wash me clean of every sin. Not just the ones I committed, but the ones that were committed against me. Father, I forgive those that defiled me, that abused me, that mutilated me. Father, I release their debt. I release and forgive them freely of their trespasses. I sow the mercy of God that I might reap your mercy that forgives all your sins. But God doesn't stop there. Because and heals all your diseases. I'm not going to ask you to embarrass yourself or shame yourself. I'm going to send his word and I'm going to believe that that healing is going to go into your life. Father, I send the word of healing into the wombs of your daughters. The womb was a place of life. It was never meant for disease and death. I release the power of God into the wombs of these women. I command every fountain of blood to be dried up every issue to be settled Father, I speak a cleansing of every disease, of herpes, of chlamydia, of HPV, of syphilis, of AIDS, of gonorrhea, Father, of diseases that we don't even know the names of, Father. I release the fire of God to bring a cleansing into these wombs and bring healing to these daughters that they would bring forth life again, that they would bring forth light again. I release the power of God. I break the power of shame. Father, lift their heads. Now, 
in Jesus name be cleansed be free be beautiful be strong take off those garments of shame father I ask you to pour out the splendor on your daughters right now by your spirit quicken the dream remove them from the nightmare father in Jesus name amen amen God bless you thank you